Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Joey Galvez, one half of your host of Explain Yourself, and I want to let you guys know about a really cool book from our friend of the show, Eli Shockey. This one is called The Grey Luck, and it's a story where magic is a commodity. Potions are sold at corner stores. Orcs and dwarves earn a living in cubicles, not on the battlefields. But there are those who resist the house's magic laws, branded a criminal and forced to live as a want for hire. There is a spell slinger they call the Greylock. Check this one out. You guys can pre-order issue three right now with code JAN241939. And make sure you guys are heading over to your favorite LCS and letting them know that you want Greylock number three and maybe pick up the first two issues. Uh, you could do that at the Scout web store. So make sure you guys are grabbing the Greylock number three, JAN241939 at previewsworld.com. Okay, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Collin II, and with me, as always, is... Is Matthew Alligator Loki House. It's a good name. Yep. Um, are you an alligator? No, actually, I'm not. But um, I like the name Alligator. That's, that's going to be my new nickname. You can call me Gator. Um, no, please don't call me Gator. <laughs> I don't want that nickname to stick. Uh, well, now it is. No, <laughs> Gator, woo! No, going to a fucking Buffalo Wild Wings with that bullshit. No, um, I, I'm, I'm gonna. Your new name is Gatorade, and um, <laughs> no, I'll call you. I'll call you Powerade. Anyway, so um, the. Uh, so today on the show we are covering the latest episode of loki the disney plus uh marvel television series um this is episode five entitled journey into mystery it was directed by kate heron and written by tom kaufman and produced by michael waldron um so uh Initial reactions here, Matt. What'd you think of this episode? Oh man, I loved it. Oh man, um, I, I watched it twice, right? And um, I, I still got get goosebumps at the same exact part each time. I don't want to tell say which one right now, okay. but um, yeah, when we get to man. it, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was a it's a good episode. I liked it a lot. Um, I still think the previous episode is my favorite, but this one was a good one. Um, it very interesting episode. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was good. Um, creates a lot of questions. <laughs> Not really sure where this show is going to end, but uh, hoping that we get some uh, good, uh, good. Um, good conclusion that's satisfying to viewers of all kinds, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, I asked what people thought of this episode. Um, here's some of the, uh, some of the thoughts here, kind of paraphrased from some of the people. Um, Jeff Avery predicts that the last episode of Loki will be the last episode of Loki. (laughs) (laughs) <clears throat> um, Amber Dawn says that it's going to be King Loki or Kang at the end maybe a variant Renslayer um, Jake says that he really hopes that it's Kang 
And he, uh, if you want to go into our group and read his whole response, he's got a lot of good points here. Uh, we don't really have time to go through all of them because he wrote a long paragraph here. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, and Allison Dow says that she thinks it might be old school Loki. Hmm. Somehow, which I'm not really sure. But you can re- read the read the answers that we have in our uh, All Too Real 2 podcast group on uh, Facebook. And, uh, you know, making your comments that you might have too. Um, but uh, it's uh, interesting... Um, Interesting thoughts, you know, like I I have my theories about how this is all going to end, which I'll get into in our speculation at the end. Um, So uh, let's get into the episode here, Matt. Um, What happened in the episode? So much. Um, So, you know, Loki wakes up in this like new realm or whatever, and... um, there's all these different Loki variations standing before him. And uh, he asks if, if he's in hell, H E L, which is like a Norse kind of purgatory type of, uh, it's basically where you went to, if you didn't go to Valhalla, which is kind of like the heaven, um, I guess of Norse afterlife somewhat. Yeah. I was, I was kind of like where everyone else goes. Like, cause basically in order to get to Valhalla, you have to, fight you have to die while fighting the battle so if you don't do that you don't get to go to the cool <laughs> the cool place <laughs> you got to go to this little <laughs> you know other other realm that's not as great you know so basically it's an incentive to keep fighting and pillaging which is you know kind of like what a lot of religious teach anyway um and, um, but, uh, <laughs> yes okay. it's a whole other, a whole, other whole, whole other subject right there but um you can only go to the good place if you kill okay anyway um that i've got i got derailed here but um so they're like, he's like, am I dead? And they're like, you will be if you don't come with us. And then you see like this really creepy purple cloud, like forming like a face with like red, red eyes in the mouth, making this really creepy electronic sound. Like, oh man, that just, that, that sound, it just freaked me out. Um, it's very, very, okay. The, the, it's, it's, it's a smoke monster, very much like the smoke monster on Lost. Hmm. That makes similar sounds, which is interesting because yeah. um, Michael Waldron, who is the uh, head showrunner of the show or writer or whatever you want to call it, head writer. They don't call him a showrunner. Um, he is a big fan of Damon Lindelof, who uh, created was one of the co-creators of Lost. So I'm thinking that there was some inspiration there, even though the character that we find out is named Eliath. That's the that's the name of the smoke monster in the show is actually a character from the comic books. So, but it's interesting that, you know, it's like very, it had a lost feel to it. Yeah. Um, so just quick note. Now that's going to be my new nickname is smoke monster. And I'm going to do a whole persona of myself as like a pothead who's like in a jam band and it's like, Oh man, the smoke monsters here. I mean, I don't really hardly smoke, but like, you know, that could be my new oh, thing. I'm so. sorry, Matt. No, your nickname is going to be smoke gator. No, smoke <laughs> doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> gator smoke. It's, smoke. it's gator smoke. <laughs> gator. <laughs> it's gator smoke is here, man. <laughs> God, that's so depressing. But, um, Tonight, a one night only, Willie Nelson and Gator Smoke. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, um, yeah, so they, they, they um, you know, are going, basically just trying to hide away from the smoke monster or the Gator Smoke. And then, um, he's, like, you know, trying to ask them a bunch of questions, but they're just, they're like, no, we got to just, we got to survive, got to get out of here first. And, uh, they eventually tell him a few things just to sort of appease him a little bit, and then he eventually just decides to follow them to figure out how to how to you know live in this place or whatever. Uh, meanwhile, you got uh, Sylvie is interrogating Renslayer now to figure out you know everything about the TVA, like how it's created, like how you know who really runs the place now that the Time Masters 
have been revealed just to be, you know, androids just standing, you know, just playing the part. And um, Renslayer is kind of, you know, trying to act like she's concerned or just as shocked as Sylvia is. But it turns out, the whole, you know, of course, the whole thing's an act. She's just trying to stall Sylvie until you know the guards can get there so they can try to yeah basically, basically what she does is she 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 pulls out miss minutes to ask her uh Renslayer asks has a uh, miss minutes uh like look for things until the TVA troops can arrive and uh you know basically that that was all just a ruse there between miss minutes and uh Renslayer, you know, <laughs> to try to kill time before they kill uh, Sylvie. <laughs> kill time, I like yep. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentional puns, love them. Yep. Um, <laughs> Unintentional puns opening up for gator smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like a really crappy jab band, and so then like they all open up for um, oh shit, what's that? <clears throat> the guy you know who's like like kind of like in a jam band sort of like acoustic jam band, like um. Well, maybe they're all opening up for fish. No, <laughs> no, not fish. The guy you know, we saw him a couple years ago at 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 the uh, in Toledo. Um, you know, he plays acoustic guitar. He's like kind of like a jam band. I forgot his name. Um, Is it Ryan Dunlap? Yeah, so like these shitty bands open up for Ryan Dunlap, so like it's like you know, and he's like doing it for a favor, like all right, yeah, so let um unintentional puns and Gator Smoke open for me. Yes, none of them <laughs> Sorry, should, none dude. of them should be associated with Ryan Dunlap, who is a very good, talented artist. Who no, I know. Is, <laughs> if if you're listening to this podcast, which I don't think you are, because I don't think he's a fan of Marvel, um, just letting you know. I love you, Ryan. You're awesome. Make sure you go look him up, Ryan Dunlap. Um, yeah. You know, yes. His, and yeah. please, please buy please his, buy his CDs and listen yeah. to his music. Yeah, and let Gator Smoke open up for you. Yes, and uh, <laughs> they will one day. Ironically, Ryan lives in Florida now, home of the Florida Gators. So, um, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> <what> the... wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh god anyway so um <laughs> the uh the what what uh, so, so they're, they're killing time and um basically when the when the uh when the troops arrive and sylvie's about to be captured um after uh renslayer has kind of told her that loki is still alive and that he's been teleported to this place called the Void, which is a dimension at end of at the end of time where everything the TVA prunes is dumped, <laughs> like everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Um, so basically, people aren't really dying; they're being sent to this void where they could die there, but they're not. Right. Dying. They're not dying at the TVA. Um. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Sylvie decides to prune herself so she can go to the void and basically try to help Loki. Um, then uh, Renslayer goes and um, she uh, she starts interrogating Hunter B-15, who's been imprisoned. Um... And after that, she uh, basically the the thing is uh, okay. Here, here's a little criticism of this episode. <clears throat> she learned nothing from B fifteen when she talked to her. <laughs> right. The scene was basically pointless. Right. <laughs> I mean, I I, I I mean the the actors did great in the scene and everything. It's just nothing happened <clears throat> in that scene. That's my one, I like, m- one of, I mean, there's probably other criticisms I have, but that's one of my major criticisms for the show, that, this episode, so. <clears throat> right. But maybe, I think it may have been, oh yeah, sorry. No, I was just saying, maybe there's more to it. 
Yeah, I was thinking maybe it's mainly for us, the audience, to know that she's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like don't worry, she wasn't killed. Like yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know. We'll find out in the next episode if there's more, mm -hmm. you know, symbolism or meaning behind that scene or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so she Renslayer then instructs Miss Minutes to help her find the TVA's creator. So right now she wants to know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, so basically, um, what, what what we're finding out is that Renslayer's just been obeying these things and doesn't know what else to do, but she still wants to obey these, you know, commands from the from the the timekeepers or whoever it is. But now she's not sure who's behind the timekeepers either. Well, she's yeah, yeah, she's freaking out because she she even said it's, it's only her. She's like the, running the building now or whatever, yeah. like. Like, you know what I mean? She was a judge, and then she answers to them, but now they don't exist. And see, I think there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of symbolism in the show about religion and stuff. And mm -hmm. in, in a way, and I mean I'm I mean, I believe in God myself, but the thing is it's like um in a way, it's kinda like when you're when or maybe a better example would be like when you're a kid and you're behaving because you don't want Santa Claus to not bring you the new PlayStation <laughs> that you want. Or whatever, you know, and um, so you behave. But then when you become an adult and you find out there is no Santa Claus, it's kind of like yeah. that way, too, with religion. Like, if you were to find out there is no God. Because in this right. world, kind of the timekeepers were the gods <clears throat> in control of things. So she's like basically like a like 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 a disciple of these people who basically then finds out that the God she's been worshiping doesn't exist and is an illusion. Right. So in trying to figure out who the real God is that she has been worshiping. Right. You know, so it's kind of yeah. interesting, you know, it is. Yeah. <clears throat> it, yeah, it really is. Um, Sorry, I'm just thinking of Gator Smoke again. <laughs> Such a cool name, I like it. I think it's, I think it's gonna stick with me. I kind of like Gator Smoke now. Yes. <laughs> we can make a cool T-shirt where it's just like, a, like a like a smoke monster, but it's got a gator head, or maybe it's just like a bunch of or, smoke around an alligator. Or, or I was thinking it's just a it's 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 a gator smoking a marijuana. You know, yeah, okay. Oh. Smoke, 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 smoke. <laughs> a gator with a doobie in his mouth. You know, we're, we're good. You know, we got this. Dude, um, <laughs> I, I, no, I'm starting a jam band or a, a one-man band. That's it. That's the t-shirt right there. Yes. Whole new, per, whole new persona for me starting right now. I can do it. Uh, <laughs> Make sure you look forward to gator smoke in the future, folks. We'll, yep. keep, we'll keep you updated here on All Too Real, too, you know. <laughs> For some upcoming shows about Gator Smoke. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> Matt Haas mm. is Gator Smoke. Yep. In Gator Smoke. <laughs> In Gator Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to be a one man band. Playing or it's the be songs of Gator Smoke. <laughs> Gator Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, better than like that one time when I found this band? And, um, was it mp3.com like in the early 2000s before it got shut down for all the weird legal reasons issues they had for like copyright infringement or whatever there's a lot of good shit on there that unfortunately just got completely deleted off the internet I can't find it anymore but there was a band on there called Slipknot that was a jam band from like Massachusetts or some shit and like, <laughs> like you go to their website or their mp3.com site and like like you just see a big thing, like no, we are not the metal band Slipknot. We like we came up with the name. Like we've been together since 1992. Uh, <laughs> we're not like we're not changing the name because uh, you know. That's funny. And they had some pretty good songs too. I I I had it on my old computer. That's you know since then it's crashed. So I don't know if I can get the the content anymore, but. <laughs> It's all good. It's all Look, good. If you're, anyway. if you're listening, Slipknot, let us know. Yeah. Either, yeah, e either one. Either Slipknot. I mean... Just, either Slipknot, yeah. yeah. Let us know. <clears throat> We'd love to have you on the show. Um, so, to talk about your music. Um, yeah. So, what else happens here in the episode, Matt? 
so the, the other Lokis, they, they take him down to like their lair, basically. There's like an old bowling alley where they just, over time, have collected a bunch of cool shit and kind of just made it their own little kingdom while they're you know, while they're hiding from the smoke monster, while they're hiding from gator smoke, and then, um, and like the 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 kid is actually like the the main Loki because he yeah, yeah the Loki the Lokis the, that we have down here are alligator Loki, <clears throat> boastful Loki, classic Loki, and kid Loki, and kid Loki yeah is is a uh, their their ruler because he has killed Thor, <laughs> yeah, damn so, so yeah. <clears throat> and you Which know, is, uh, and it's really cool when he sits on his throne. He's uh, drinking a uh, ecto cooler. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. And he's like, it was like candy cane, it's a very childlike throne, you know. Like, but um, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's another uh, discontinued drink from like the nineties, from the 80s, yeah, exactly. 80s and 90s, so yeah, yep, and that's what he's drinking. I miss Echo, Ecto Cooler. That was so good. Oh man, I, those are so good. Um, I mean, they came back like in like 2016 or something when the last, uh, then when that uh, Ghostbusters Answer the Call came out, the the one with the female Ghostbusters. Yeah, but I, I don't think I got any for some reason. I didn't. I didn't either. I, I wanted to. I couldn't find them anywhere. So, damn, they probably sold out. Is what happened. Yeah. And, um, oh damn! Yeah, he was drinking that, and then um. They're all just kind of like telling their stories, you know, about what happened, like their version of what happened. Boastful Loki says that he killed Iron Man and Captain, was it Captain, Captain America? America? Yeah, yeah. And he 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 got all six Infinity Stones and the allig- alligator Gator Smoke um, basically like makes like a grunting noise and you know, he's basically like Tom's bullshit, you know, and then, and then like. Boso Loki says something like, "Oh well, um, at least you know my Nexus event wasn't eating the wrong neighbor's cat." Yeah, <laughs> the alligator jumps up and tries to try to bite his hand and stuff like that. Oh boy, that's funny. Yeah, uh, do you want to take a break? Like, do you want to take a break really quick? Yeah, sure. Okay, sorry. Uh, we'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there So, uh, Gator Smoke is, yep. uh, is, is opening up for the, the void <laughs> <laughs> and boastful Loki. They're, 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 they're playing downtown and we're going to smoke some Gators. <laughs> I hear it tastes like chicken. Apparently everything's supposed to taste like chicken. Well, why don't you just get chicken then? Why do you need Mm -hmm. to eat rattlesnake 
Yep, everything tastes like like chicken. Those brownies I had the other day, they tasted like chicken. Oh, God, chicken brownies. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, what else happens in this episode here, Matt? Uh, um, Okay, so, so old, old Loki, he's like the mature one, I guess. Um, I said mature, not mature. I get getting all fancy here. Not on purpose, just happened. Um, That's what happens in (laughs) That's why when the Gator Smoke gets serious, he gets serious. But um, he he's like says what happens with him is that Thanos didn't really kill him because he cast an illusion that was so so um, realistic looking that Thanos actually thought that he had killed him, and then he just went off and hid, and then he and just basically floated through space for a while. Is what he said. And then he eventually found a a planet just all to himself, I guess, and just lived alone for a long time. But then he, he got lonely after, you know, a number of years or whatever. And then he went back home to see if, you know, Thor was still there or whatever. And, you know, he missed his brother and his family. And then the second day he went to leave, that's when TVA picked him up for, you know, um, his, I guess, Nexus, I guess he was supposed to be killed by Thanos, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, there there was a... It's funny because there were fans that, that speculated, like one of the fan rumors was that, that that's what Loki actually did in Infinity War. Right, yeah. So I think this is kind of Marvel's way of answering you, telling you, no, that fucking didn't happen. Um, <laughs> you know? So. Not, that, yeah, not that Loki, the yeah. other... Mm-hmm. Yeah, because this Loki... I mean, you'll find out later in the episode. This little Loki is like insanely good at creating illusion, like yeah. way more than like our Loki yeah. could do. Like, <clears throat> so um, so basically, then we find out that Sylvie, you know, who has arrived there, she uh. Briefly enchants Eliath, the smoke monster. Before th- then, um, she's running from it and she sees a a pizza delivery truck coming towards her. <laughs> and uh, she gets in and the driver is Mobius and Mobius. <laughs> yep. Yep. Wow. And uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, basically the the two of them are uh, trying to formulate a plan of what they're going to do. And uh, she decides that we need to turn around and go towards the the smoke monster (laughs) because she wants to enchant it. Um, Then we're we're back to our our band of Lokis. (laughs) And... um, they uh there's a a second group of Lokis that is led by President <laughs> Loki. <laughs> um who is recently in and there was a th- there was a comic series recently where Loki ran for president. It was back in twenty sixteen. <laughs> he was like running against Donald Trump and, and uh Hillary Clinton <laughs> in the comics. And um his his whole uh his whole campaign was the fact that he admitted to the fact that he lies <laughs> so he was truthful about the fact that he was just going to lie unlike most politicians who just lie and don't admit to it um <laughs> and uh there was like a there was like a, a poster too that said his campaign was believe but in the middle the words the, the letters l i e were like in a different <laughs> color so it looked like you know lie so yeah <laughs> yeah that was great yeah so it's pretty cool um run i didn't read it but i've i read the synopsis of it and it sounds pretty cool mm-hmm. i might i might go back and actually read the read that run of comics because that sounds like a fun one to read yeah um so uh yeah he he, he goes in there and uh it's like uh up to uh, he, he, um, basically he comes down there and there's like a big fight. Alligator Loki bites off President Loki's hand, <laughs> which was pretty sweet. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, um, so, uh, boastful Loki ends up betraying the other group of the Lokis that we've been with. And basically the whole time he was just basically lying to them as well. Yeah. And, uh, he joins uh, President Loki and his band of Lokis. And uh, classic Loki, played played brilliantly by by the way by Richard E. Grant. Um, mm-hmm. um, he helps uh, Alligator Loki, Kid Loki, and our Loki escape. And they uh, they go out there and they eventually run into Sylvie and Mobius. Um, and then using a temp pad that Sylvie stole from Renslayer, Mobius chooses to return to the TVA. This is after he's you know talk to them and things and he's just trying to understand them. but the thing I don't get is he doesn't understand that there's an alligator Loki <laughs> he's like yeah he's like that's a Loki too but so <clears throat> so that makes me wonder how many times his brain's been wiped like you'd think <laughs> that somebody that's been chasing Lokis for the TVA especially you know chasing Sylvie would, <clears throat> would know would... that there's an existence of an alligator Loki <clears throat> well yeah, the only thing I was thinking about that though too is, um, you know, Loki is, has the ability to, you know, shape shift. So maybe he decided to become an alligator. Either he just decided to remain that form. Maybe something happened where he couldn't go back to, you know what I mean, his yeah. true form or whatever. I don't, I don't know. know. Who knows? Probably just a funny thing they did. Yeah. Um, because. Um, well, because too, do you remember too when they went down to their lair? You saw um, Frog Thor like jumping up, trying to oh, get yeah, the frog. Um, the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, like, like when they were going down there too, and you also saw like a bunch mm-hmm. of uh, like uh, cafeteria trays and stuff. Yeah, and so so that just makes you wonder, like, instead of uh, cleaning cafeteria trays, do they just you know prune them to the void? Yeah, at the, exactly. Wait at, a minute. At, the, at the TVA, so they don't feel like cleaning them, so they just prune them. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, wow. That's like so lazy of them. They're like, yeah, yeah I just throw it in the void. Yeah, just prune it, prune them. <laughs> which, which, which could be another metaphor for something in our real world: how we just throw shit away all the time and it ends up in a big land, uh, you know, landfill. Oh, yeah, well, totally. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, did you see? Um, <clears throat> The, the helicopter had Thanos written on it. Yeah, which is from was the, which is from the comics as well. There, there 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 was there was a time where Thanos used to travel around in a helicopter with his name written on the side of it. <laughs> That's like so un like yeah. uninspired, like you know, anticlimactic. <laughs> like I'm thinking, like what if Infinity War and Endgame had him showing up in a helicopter for the final battle, like with his oh. name with his name on the side of it, yeah. like. But that, you, but but, but the <laughs> the thing I go with them that too is it seems like a very Trump type thing to do. Oh yeah, <laughs> like his name, but too like the helicopter was just so bland looking. Like can you imagine him showing up in Endgame in a helicopter instead of a spaceship? <laughs> and he's like, "You could not live with your own failures." And where did that lead you? Right back to me, and they're like, "Excuse me, like this whole house, is that your helicopter behind you?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just had this weird image of like the opening of the TV show Mash with Suicide is Painless playing, <laughs> where that helicopter comes landing in with the with the wounded, and um, <laughs> but but instead it's 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 Thanos and his helicopter <laughs> with Suicide is Painless. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so um, anyways, the uh, <laughs> the um. Um, so, so, uh, like I said, Mo- Mobius, uh, uses the temp pad that Sylvia stole from Renslayer and chooses to return to the TVA, uh, to reveal the truth about the organization to its workers. Um, he asks, um, the, all the Loki variants, the, you know, the alligator Loki and the, and the, uh, kid Loki and old Loki to, uh, return with him. And, uh, they, uh. They decide to stay behind to help fight. Mm-hmm. After the uh, the variants escape, well, well, they, they actually decide to stay behind just because uh, they're used to being there, mm-hmm. basically. Um, 
so then uh, Loki attempts to distract Elioth so Sylvie can enchant it. Um, this is this was after um, there was also a really sweet little scene where Sylvie and Loki are talking to each other. Mm. Loki enchants himself a blanket because it's cold. And then he uh, ends up making the blanket bigger so they both can cuddle together, sort of. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of weird. It's a weird romance. It, it, yeah, it, but it, the thing is, it's like, is it a romance or is it a friendship? Well, what is it? It's know? it's one of those things where it's it's like it's like one of those in between. Because I've, I've had a couple of relationships like that where it's not it's not just friendship. But it's not quite. Um, yeah, boyfriend girlfriend. It's like this weird sort of limbo where it's just you just deeply, deeply care about the other person, and it's like that's kind of what I'm the vibe I've got, you know, from that. Um, yeah, and I mean it, it is also the thing where it's like it's kind of like Loki's having his first friendship. Or yeah, second, exactly. Or second, I mean, he also has a friendship with uh, with with Mobius because before Mobius goes back to the TBA, they hug. You know, and it's like, you know, thanks, mm-hmm. thanks, friend and stuff like that. You know, they're 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 friends, you know, so it's it's kind of sweet that he Loki is changing to be a good person overall. Yeah. So far, at least, you know, it's 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 character development. And like uh, Jake pointed out on our uh, on our group, mm-hmm. there is a lot of things like where hopefully that there's some kind of good solution to this, but otherwise we basically just had character development for a character. We already had character development for in the movies. Yeah. So, so, so he wasted, you know, six episodes of the show, you know? So, so hopefully there's some kind of good solid solution in episode six that makes it worth all of this. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, exactly. Cause, cause yeah, cause at some point he's going to have to, go back to the original timeline where he gets killed by Thanos. Otherwise that wouldn't have happened. Maybe unless we, some, there, there, there are rumors of a, of a season two for the show too. Oh, okay. So, who knows? Maybe he takes over the TVA. <laughs> yeah. And then just right. Well, see that would just ruin his character development though, too, if he did that. But. Well, well, no, what I mean is not, not like in an evil way. Like maybe he's taking, oh, okay. taking it over and he's going to like, you know, become like basically um like like uh it'll be like quantum leap and he's writing the wrongs in history he'll be like sam beckett on that show you know Ooh, so nice <laughs> yeah who knows <clears throat> you know it could be like a, or, or like you know legends of tomorrow where they they have to fix anomalies and stuff you know that are happening in history um yeah so um basically there's the, that that sweet scene, you know, between the two of them, which I really liked. Um, so after the the variants have all escaped, um, Loki then tries to distract Elioth in a kind of uh, Ian Malcolm sort of way from Jurassic Park, where he's like waving some fire towards, you know, so that he looks at him. Um, Kid Loki had given him a a sword, and that's what he was using. To distract, the, mm-hmm. yeah, he he conjured him a uh, like like a short sword that you know kind of uh, has like magical powers. So um, they they basically both fail while Sylvie's trying to enchant it. She can't enchant it. Um, then classic Loki returns in like an awesome scene mm-hmm. where he creates this large illusion of Asgard, which. Mm-hmm to me in this scene kind of looked like the uh, Emerald city from wizard of Oz, which this show has a lot of allusions to, <laughs> um, to basically he created this illusion so it could distract Elioth, <clears throat> And then um saving Sylvie. He ends up sacrificing himself in the process. <clears throat> and then uh, Sylvie and Loki. Sylvie basically reveals to Loki that he has the powers to enchant as well. And they both use their powers together and, enchant Elioth. And then behind the void, we see this big citadel which they end up walking towards and that's how the show ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Which we're assuming that we're assuming that's where the real Time Master lives, you know? 
Right. I mean, yeah, it's probably, but, um, but yeah, that scene, that's the one I got the goosebumps on each time is when Loki, classic Loki, he ends up sacrificing himself and he's like, he's like screaming glorious purpose and he's like laughing like, like a maniac just as yeah. the smoke, gator smoke, you know, kills him or whatever. And then like his, his, um, his helmet didn't like pretty much helmet still there, but the body's gone. Yeah. And, uh, Man, that was such a good scene though, too, because like, because like that. See, that's interesting, because like that classic Loki. That was sort of like his redemption arc too, because he had already kind of he was an old man at that point. He was pretty much like a very wise person. Like he realized like the you know the biggest flaw of a Loki is just being so like devious and you know and like just for its own sake and it uh, always leads to something bad you know and yeah it seems like that was his final you know good deed or whatever you know type of thing it was just a really good scene like if you haven't watched it yet you just gotta watch him when he's just screaming at the monster the smoke monster saying i really hope people are not listening to this that haven't watched it because that would be kind of pointless (laughs) i know whatever (laughs) Um, whatever yeah Uh so um You want to take a break here, Matt, and we'll come back and we'll talk about some trivia and some speculation? Uh, yeah, some trivia and specs, okay. We'll be right back, folks. Need a new podcast to listen to? Well, why not check out the Super Podcast from the Super Network at supermarcy.com where we discuss films and pop culture and we do monthly fan-voted commentaries. We are available on all major podcasting platforms. And we are back with our glorious purpose here. <laughs> our glorious, glorious purpose of talking about some trivia. You ready for this, Matt? Yeah. Okay. Just before Loki and the four variants enter the underground vault, there is a small helicopter with Thanos written on it, as we've talked about. It perfectly resembles the helicopter Thanos piloted in Spidey Super Stories, issue 39, published on March in March of 1979, which was a simplified comic book adaptation of the Spider-Man spots from the TV show The, the Electric Company. <laughs> so that's where that uh, helicopter comes from. Um, the title of the episode comes from the comic book series Journey into Mystery. Loki f- made his first appearance in issue 85, the original version of the series. Uh, was renamed the Mighty Thor at issue 126. The original title was revived for various purposes, such as a horror anthology in the 1970s and various spin-off titles uh, that feature characters from the Thor series in the 1990s and the 2000s. Uh, The USS Eldridge makes an appearance in The Void, a ship made (laughs) famous by UFO UFO myths, surrounding the Philadelphia experiment during which it supposedly traveled through time and or other dimensions. That's a conspiracy theory going around. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. As we mentioned before, Kid Loki is seen drinking a carton of high C Ecto cooler, a soft drink that was sold in promotion of Slimer and the real Ghostbusters. Um, uh, Several Marvel Easter eggs can be spotted around the void, such include uh we see a huge huge helmet of yellow jacket the character from ant-man the villain from that movie oh yeah yeah Yeah, we see the thanos copter we see throg we see the tva food trays um (laughs) the dark aster a helicarrier um a statue head of the living tribunal and Kang's Citadel. Mm. So, um, many more Loki variants are briefly introduced. Two worthy of recognition are Vote Lo- Loki, which is the President Loki, the leader of the pack, who is an exact copy of Loki from the comic book series um, named Loki, Ver- Lo- Loki um, and name uh, of the same name, and Loki variant L8914. Hmm. Um, um, uh, 
who has a oh oh yeah oh there was another there was another uh, a Loki variant low L eight that's a different one sorry <laughs> who has horns and sunglasses who was seen as a hologram in episode two of this show <laughs> um uh the uh on the TVA screen the location Oak Island Nova Scotia appears. It is a location that the Holy Grail is supposedly hidden. <laughs> Later, the Lokis are drinking from goblets and grails. So, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, Kid Loki gives Loki an ancestral blade called um, Leviathan. Um, Leviathan. L-A-E-V-A-T-I-N-N, however that's pronounced. The blade comes from Norse mythology and has appeared in the comics. It is uh, needed to slay a cosmic being. Um, and um, Leviathan is Norse for damage twig. <laughs> so, okay. Um, the uh, pizza truck's license plate is G R N W I D. Or W1D. Um, this is, refers to Mark Grunwald, who is a co creator of the Eliath and the physical basis for the character of Mobius. <laughs> um, there's a hula girl and an air freshener with a tropical island scene on the car that Mobius is driving. Um, both, both, both possible Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. slash Tahiti references. Um, in the background behind Horned Loki in the Loki lair is the arcade game Polybius. Polybius <laughs> is seen as an urban legend that emerged in the early 2000s um, concerning a fictitious 1980s arcade game. The legend described the game as part of a government-run crowdsourced psychology experiment based in Portland, Oregon during 1981. Gameplay supposedly produced intense um, psychoactive and addictive effects in the player. Yeah, L look up. There's like a there's there's various uh, videos on YouTube about the history of Polybius, which are mm -hmm. very it's it's a very interesting little uh, um, conspiracy theory. Um, yeah, the, the the frog version of Thor, also known as Throg, is briefly seen. Um, as we go down, and it's in a jar labeled uh, T365. Uh, this is a reference to the issue in which uh, Throg originally appeared in, in Thor. Um, uh, after the tilting, twisting camera shot that ends with the severed head of the timekeeper, that was awesome, too, at the very beginning, the way the show opened. The camera work that they had on that. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, upside down. Yeah. yeah. The first structure we fly by is the Lighthouse of Alexandria, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was destroyed by an earthquake in 1480. Um, um, debuting in the uh, Avengers, the Terminatrix objective number one comic, Eliath is a large purple gaseous cloud similar to its depiction in this episode unbound by time who control the temporal empire triple the size of its rival Kang the Conqueror okay so th that's our uh, little uh, trivia that we had here for this episode um, so let's move on to speculation here Matt okay how do you speculate this show is going to end who do you think the big um leader of the TVA is? You know, I don't... I don't really know. Uh, I don't know if it's just one person or if it's like a... you know, a whole organization or... I don't know. I know some people are saying it's another variation of Loki. I don't really want that to be true because... I don't know. Because there's already so many Lokis, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, maybe Mobius, maybe he's been playing a long con game, but I would hate that to be true as well, because I really like Mobius. Um, 
I don't know. I, I don't really know. Um, maybe not Kane to conquer because if they already showed uh, a um, something of his um, already, you know, in the void. Yeah, I mean that, that's yeah. that's the thing that they, they've there's there's several th- like allusions to Kang throughout this show, which make mm-hmm. me think it might be a misdirect. Um, yeah. I, I think we definitely because we already know Kang's going to appear in the next Ant Man movie. Um, yeah, and like I've said before, I think the best way to do this is have some kind of tease with Kang being involved in some way. But I think we need another reveal as well for the satisfaction of um, of like normal casual television viewers, because most people don't know who Kang is, you know. Exactly. Well, you know what I think? I think Kane is this show's Mephisto, I think is what yeah. it is. Uh, like, people like us who are doing research, like, oh, it's Mephisto, it's Mephisto, it's Mephisto, and it turns out it's Agatha. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> or Agnes or whatever, you know. Um, yeah. It was Agatha, and I, Agatha yeah, I think, all along. And, yeah. yeah, so I'm thinking this is going to be hit, the Kane is this show's version of Mephisto. It's like, oh, here's a reference to Kane. Oh, Renslayer, she was Kang's lover, and, you know, all this stuff, and, you know. See, I'm thinking Renslayer has something to do with it, maybe. It could mm-hmm. be it could be a, a, a variant of Mobius, maybe not Mobius that we love, but another Mobius, you know? Another Mobius, yeah, maybe maybe that's, you know, she talked about all the those rings I'm, from his coast, you know, I'm drinks. St- I'm still thinking that, that Mobius... And or Renslayer are both variants of Loki. Oh, okay. That's my theory. I'm thinking there's something going on there. One of them is going to be revealed to be a Loki. Okay. That's another, uh, you know, thing that could be a satisfying ending here, too. But I just, I don't know who's behind the whole thing. It's, it'll be interesting to find out. You know, it'd be funny if it was that weird dude um, who played Pillboy in, oh, in a good place. Eugene, C- Eugene Cadero, his character. Because he hasn't been in the episode in the past three episodes, I, no. I noticed. Um, yeah. So. That would, um, that would that, be that would be weird. I don't think it's going to happen. But no, it would <laughs> be, be weird. Be well, I'm just saying because it's so unassuming. It's so unassuming. You know, just like Ag- Agnes was. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we picked up on Agnes for a while. But, oh, like. Yeah. She, you know, she's supposed to be his great neighbor and all this kind of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I, it's probably I, not going to be him. But no, no, <laughs> it'd be funny if it was. Um, the, uh, I, I don't know who, who it could be. Um, I know a lot of people are, like I said, are, are voting on Kang. Um, mm-hmm. Which, I mean, my thing is, is I, I understand that for the motivation of moving forward the MCU. And I think that we need to have some kind of Kang reference in the last episode, like maybe just like a a teaser at the end, like in the end credits or something. <clears throat> but like I said, for the satisfaction of a casual viewer, that wouldn't make any sense because that would just be like, 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 say you're watching. I don't know. Like, let's let's break this down to like an episode of Law and Order. OK. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to figure out who who the who the killer is of, of some kid or something. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then, you know, you get all these suspects. Oh, it could be his dad. It could be this other guy we met in the episode. It could be this woman that we met here and there, you know. And then the last, like, scene of the show, they reveal that the killer is just some random dude. <laughs> That's what this would be like, you know. Who's in, yeah, some random dude who was in a comic book. Um, <laughs> yeah. version of this episode who was in that well yeah totally we we read about that guy yeah yeah uh, yeah it's exactly like, it's like it's some random dude who was in like season one of Law and Order um and we're, yeah. and we're in yeah. season twenty three or something you know what I mean it's just like <laughs> yeah exactly it's like what <clears throat> yeah um yeah I mean like yeah I do think Kang is definitely gonna be. At least brought up. Maybe this is what alerts King to everything that's going on. You know, at the very end, like he's not a part of it, but then all of a sudden he hears about all this crazy shit going on. You know, and by the way, I'm sorry, but like from what I've so far heard about King the Conqueror, I I don't really understand. Like it's like Thanos, for example, his motivation for becoming a quote villain, which 
he doesn't see himself as a villain, which most villains don't, is because, you know, his home planet was ravished by famine and he warned the people that this was, was what happened and it happened because they didn't listen to him. So then that's what, you know, spurs him on his crusade to erase, you know, half of all creation so that the other yeah. half could... Okay, King the Conqueror's motivation is he grew up in a utopia where there's too much peace going on and he was bored. Like, I mean, like, how is that, like, compelling? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it just seems well, they, like... Well, they, they could change the motivation for the movies and stuff, too. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. The, 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 like, the MCU doesn't always stick to the comic books, so... I know. But I just mean, even from the comic books perspective, like, who would... Who would sit down and want to read like, oh man, like I want to see what this guy's is, what this guy's motivation is? It's like, oh, he grew up in a time well, of technological advancement and peace, well, and he got bored. For, for, <laughs> for, for a good villain, though, you don't always need the motivation. I mean, the in the first Halloween movie, we never really understood totally the the motivation be- behind Michael Myers. We never really understood. The motivation behind why the Joker does what he does in Batman, you know? Yeah, I suppose. But that's the thing, though. We don't understand. But if we did and we find out, oh, I was bored and I ran out of Batman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just saying there there doesn't. There, I mean, I'm just saying all villains don't need to be somebody who sees themselves as the hero. You know, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, like a lot of villains, some villains are just villains. They're just people that are just evil who, you know, know they're evil and do evil things. Um, Yeah. I mean, that's not necessary. I mean, in at least in literature and uh, movies and TV and stuff. But uh, the, um, you know, in reality, a lot of times, I mean, I don't think that Donald Trump sees himself as the villain. Even though he is, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. He does seem pretty devious, but <laughs> but, but but overall, I think in a lot of things, he, he does seem self obsessed and narcissistic. But that could be a mental issue that basically causes him to act the way he acts. Yeah, where he you know it, it's greed that has overpowered him. But maybe he didn't initially go out to become a villain. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's you know people do things for different reasons. But I guess there are people. I mean, I guess you could say that about him or certain people that maybe they are just evil, you know. But like a lot of times you do have a, an, an initial reasoning why somebody does something, you know, Ted Bundy killed people because of some issues when he was a child, you know, and it's like, you know, things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Drugs sometimes mess up people's brains, you know, or this happens or stuff like that. But I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of like the whole thing. It's like, you don't know is evil born in people or is it taught, you know, it's just one of those questions that we have to ponder throughout life. We have to ponder like philosophers. Yes. Yep. So any other thoughts here on this episode or the future of the show, Matt, before we uh, wrap things up? Mm. Uh, well, I do want Mobius to have that jet ski ride. Yes. I, I, I need this to happen. Okay. I need this to happen. I even came up with another song. I mean, it's not really a song. It's just a jam. But I guess you could call it Gator Smoke's first um, jam. Yeah, awesome. I might like to play for you. and probably screw okay. it up like you. Because whenever I play, when I'm when people are listening, it's when I start screwing up. But um, so we'll... Uh, We'll try it out. Um, this is called um, Jet Ski Part 2 because of the other one was called Jet Ski. All right. Okay. You ready? Good? All right. I'm ready. Okay. All right.
That was beautiful, Matt. Thank you. I think Gator, uh, Gator Smoke should uh, yep. tour with that song. <clears throat> yep. And uh, release an album. Call it uh, Glorious Purpose. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes, release it to all the fans of Gator Smoke for a <laughs> for a nominal fee. And <clears throat> um, yeah, yes, in the near future. Anyways, uh, hope you guys enjoyed all of that. Um, if you like the show, please give us a five star review on the Apple Podcast or whatever podcast app you're on that can allow you to review things. And uh, check out all two real two dot com, uh, our Facebook group, uh, all two real two podcast group. Um, it's a fun place to talk, um, debate, do whatever. Um, I don't care. Um, <laughs> We won't censor you. And um, just don't be a jerk. And um, so people, you know, be kind. Go outside, you know. Get some rays, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wear some, some rain. Wear some sunscreen, too, though. Yeah. And wear a condom. Well, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Makes sense, right? Yeah, I mean, outside, I guess, but I, um, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> you got to keep Trojan and Durex in business, man. Um, yeah. Anyway, so um, if either one of you would like to sponsor the show, please just let me know. Um, it's Mike at CullenPark dot com. But anyways, <laughs> until next time, folks. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Two Wheel Two podcast. A Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.